I want to contribute to this bill and in the spirit of the mover, Senator Kajuang, and the contribution of the Senator of Tana River, Mungatana, this is a great bill because it is thought provoking. I heard the mover get provoked. He started talking about 13 counties. Then I said, this is it. He's provoked. But quickly, you ran away. You even wanted to apologize for the remarks about Kakamega. Yet you were right. I saw Mr. Speaker, Senator Mungatana, get provoked when he said candidly that unless you're going to do it from a different platform, if you expect to change boundaries using political statements from the National Assembly in Nairobi and the Senate in Nairobi, the Turkana will not listen to you. The people of Luandeti market, they'll wonder what is wrong with Haluar to imagine that he can change our boundary. He got provoked. And I want to tell you, I want to contribute on that journey of thought provoking. And if that is the case, colleagues, I want to beg you, today we are here, tomorrow we'll not be here, we'll be replaced by young people, and if God will have blessed us with a long life, we'll be sitting back and enjoying young people building on our foundation. Bill should be stood down because it might pass here, it flop in the Senate. It might, it, 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 it might flop in the National Assembly. We should stand it down and get a better fix. The better fix is we should go back to the people. We go to the people with a constitution amendment bill with the following intention, Madam Speaker. Namely, that we have all lived devolution today. And we know that all our 47 counties, except just a few, are actually employment bureaus. There is nothing governors are doing. In fact, and with due respect to the Senator of Vega, when I look at the development budget of Vega County, I wonder how would you blame the governor for not doing flagship projects? Where will he get the money from? When I look at the budget of Lamu, the budget of Isiolo, the budget of Tarakanidi, the budget of Tana River, name them, and Nandi, they will never do development. They'll just give employments to people to massage the egos of politicians that I have employed so many youth and that kind of nonsense, and that will not fix that which we wanted devolution to do. I propose that we amend the Constitution of Kenya to reduce counties by one, removing Nairobi from being referred to as a county. Nairobi is the Commonwealth, the unifying factor, the capital city of the Republic of Kenya. If you go to the United States of America, where we have 52 states, we have a place called Washington, D.C., where they have put their monuments, their museums, the center of power, the seat of power. Capitol Hill is in Washington, D.C. This is what we should let Nairobi be. I know the distinguished senator of Nairobi will not run out of a job because he can win in many other uh, uh, counties in this country, which I don't want to point to because <laughs> I can come under attack. We remove Nairobi from our list of counties. Then number two, we amalgamate the regional counties that have been speaking to it. This endeavor by governors to go into regional blocks was not knee-jerk they had reflected that if they went into a regional block, 
then they will unlock the regional economic potential. So, I'm appealing to the people of the counties of the former Western province to accept that we have County 1, Western County. County 2, Nyanza County. County 3, North Rift County. County 4, South Rift County. County 5, Central County. County 6, North Eastern County. County 7, Upper Eastern. County 8, Lower Eastern. And County 9, the last cost. What is the benefit behind this thinking? And I said, it is a thought-provoking discussion this afternoon. I just want to flow. I don't have to be right, but I would like you to be heard by this house. I believe we will be more moving on the trajectory of looking for the ideal county. What is this ideal county that you would be looking for? In an ideal county, we want a county that is economically viable. Senator Kajuang, as the father of this motion, you can imagine the viability of Nyanza province with the counties touching the Lake Victoria, the tourism, the blue economy, the water sports, the ships that can move not only from county to county, but that can move from the port in Kisumu, go to Entebbe, go to Mwanza, you will unlock that potential instead of looking at the smaller picture, Madam Speaker. Number two, these economically viable counties will generate own source revenue. I know of a county, I will not say its name, because the senator will be offended. Thank God it's not in the house. On source revenue, they raise about 200 million on source revenue. And the shareable revenue, Senator Kajuang, father of this bill, that county gets over 12 billion shillings. So this is a county whereby, even if you give them 10 years, their focus is on shareable revenue without caring where that commonwealth is coming from. They will not be bothered to try and grow their own source revenue. They have got an easy source of 12 billion. Why struggle to raise the 200 million? We learn from own source revenue the successes of the bigger counties and senators you can look at the statistics. Now they are there. We are in the 11th years of, of, of uh, devolution. Nairobi has contributed to own source revenue in billions. Machakos in billions. Kakamega in billions. Kiambu in billions. Nakuru in billions. Why? Because they are big counties. The wisdom, there is wisdom in us amalgamating your, our counties. Number three, when you unlock the economic potential in regions, you fix the problem in Maseno. You, you fix the problem in Mutitande. You fix the problem between the Pokomos and the campers who keep on sh moving the boundary, and the people from Kilifi who are doing the same, the Pokomos. How do you fix it? Because they'll naturally be found in one huge county, and therefore ethnic friction will go down. Two, ethnic juvenism will not be there. Because the people in the huge county are most unlikely to be mono-ethnic. And therefore, they learn 
Madam Speaker, to live with each other and use the human resource from the various mosaics of their tribes to grow their county. Madam Speaker, these huge counties will also promote national cohesion. The reason why you hear so much push for affirmative action because ethnic group A feels they are marginalized and so on and so forth, it is because the dream of the 15 heroes who spoke in this house in 1963 when Jomo Kenyatta was being sworn in as prime minister, the dream they had of a nation, now devolution is diluting that dream. And that's why today, Madam Speaker, there is competition for ethnic chiefs, ethnic kingpins, because somebody wants to feel that he is the king of, for example, that little ethnic community because he has no national appeal at all. I was thinking about some national leaders today when the president was addressing the house. And I was wondering, this guy who is loading it on everybody around here, if you took him to a market in Homer Bay, and just let him alight from a matatu in a t-shirt, clean, expensive, and walk around. Many people will start asking, who is that fellow? And yet he's the fellow who is claiming that he wants to load it on, on all of us because he has no national appeal. When you have national appeal, you don't have to go and fight for an ethnic fiefdom. Madam Speaker, My last point is dealing with corruption. If our counties are big in size and few in number, the village millionaires you are seeing these days, they'll go down. Because what happens is that uh, when you go to Kisi County, the governor, because he comes from this clan, or this sub-tribe, he helps friends and relatives from his family. So you, you see little, these days we have a lot of rich village millionaires back home. Some of them not very well educated. And because thanks to the corruption in the county, he fixes this road and fixes the other one, he has gotten money, he has no respect for human resource. For God's sake, human resource is found in Highly trained people. That's what you call the most productive human resource. Because for every job, the engineer, the engineer has for himself. That job supports very many other jobs below him. And that means he grows the human resource capital. I'm going to give it a shot after this bill fails. Because fail it will. I'll give it a shot and bring a constitutional amendment bill so that we send the country to a referendum. You know, when the oversight fund came, you saw we were not in agreement because we were being unfair. Those of us who come from huge counties, what we were given in the first quarter that we got, we did things. Because the money is reasonable. But what do you give a smaller county? Probably all they did, they might have done training of the people who he wants to employ in the oversight structure. Let us think big. Let us think national. Let us move the country forward to kill ethnic juvenilism, to promote opportunities that Madam Speaker 
will create jobs for our children. God has blessed me with a number of children. And each one of them, I have time for them. And I found they share something in common. And that is that this grace that older people have for land where you want to go and grow maize or you want to go and grow cotton and whatever it is, our youth are not in it. Our youth are now wired differently and therefore let us use shareable revenue to ensure that we grow our economy, grow our, our opportunities, and fix our unemployment. Finally, but not least, colleagues, the minister was here last week, and he told us, go and ensure that governors have opened at least four strategic centers in each ward in your county so that the government can deliver and secure affordable fertilizer. He told us. Oh, you will not believe what is happening in some of the counties, Kakamega included. They have refused to open those strategic positions. Instead, they have gone into competition with the national government because they have found a business opportunity. What are they doing? The national fertilizer is 2,500 shillings per 50 kilogram bag. And the county government has responded by producing their own fertilizer of 3,840 50 kilogram bag on the argument that they have lowered the price, their purchasing price by 40%. The national government should not just sit back, honorable members, on the assumption that because agriculture is fully devolved, then they leave it to the governors to do what they want with agriculture. The fertilizer by the national government of 2,500 should now be forced upon governors so that all Wanaingi in the farming counties can access cheaper fertilizer for us to achieve food stability. With those many reasons, I oppose this bill. Uh, he's done. Uh, okay, yeah. please proceed. Just inform me. Uh, Madam Speaker, it's unfortunate that Senator Kalolia sat down, but when I was moving the bill, I indicated that in this house we benefit from the wisdom of two members who were there in Ivasha when we decided on 47 counties. I thought Senator Mugatana would address that. And I also hoped Senator Kalwale would address that so that those of us who are not there can be guided. But it's unfortunate that he has already taken his seat. Uh, order, order. I, d I don't think that was for response. I don't think that requires your response. No, no, no. You had already sat. Uh, Senator, Senator Kalwale, no, you don't. I don't think you, you need to respond. You don't have to respond. Behind the tent, Senator Halwale, you may do that behind the tent. Uh, Senator Sifuna?